Hi, I'm Bob Rubart with the Oracle Technology Network, and I have definitive proof that this is another two-minute tech tip. Back for his regular monthly visit is Stephen Feuerstein. Stephen is an architect at Oracle Corporation, and he's the author of Oracle PLSQL Programming, now in its sixth edition from O'Reilly Media. Welcome back, Stephen. Thank you so much, Bob. Getting ready, getting ready. You're Warming all warmed up. up. You're all loosened <clears throat> up, right? Okay, so what's the topic of this month's tech tip? I'm going to talk about the lovely, uh, unusual cursor for loop in PLSQL. All right, you know the drill. If you are ready, your two minutes start now. So my tip has to do with the cursor for loop. We could say, well, that's not a really big deal. Why don't you talk about some in-depth, complex, advanced feature? But I want to talk about the cursor for loop because it shows some of the power and simplicity of the PLSQL language and also teaches some important lessons about how you as a PLSQL developer should best utilize the language. So the cursor for loop demonstrates that PLSQL is first and foremost a database programming language. So in addition to all the usual constructs and our native support for SQL, the PLSQL team went further and said, how can we burn in and make as easy as possible executing SQL statements inside PLSQL? Cursor for loop says, hey, don't write your own loop, fetch this, exit when it's done, close your cursor when you're done. We'll do it all for you. You just tell us what the select statement is you want. We'll go through all those rows for you. We'll do all the work for you. And you decide in the body of the loop what you want to do. Now, what's so great about the cursor for loop besides the fact that it saves you some time typing is that it is actually a high level declarative structure. You're not telling Oracle how to get the data. You're just saying, this is the data I want and here's what I want to do with it. Now, as a result, Oracle is able to automatically optimize the performance of those cursor for loops as if they were bulk collect. In other words, instead of getting one row at a time, fetching one row at a time, it will automatically fetch a hundred rows at a time greatly speeding up your query. And you didn't have to write that. You just have to make sure the optimizer is turned on, which it is by default. So to me, the cursor for loop is a brilliant example of how seconds. we can encourage developers to move as high up in the language as possible, use the highest declarative statements possible, making your life easier, and also giving the compiler the maximum amount of flexibility to uh, implement your statement in a way that gives you best performance. One thing though, before I'm done, never seconds. use a cursor for loop to, re to fetch a single mm -hmm. row. I see this sometimes mm -hmm. and it drives me crazy. It's an example of really bad laziness. So if you've got a single row fetch, you select into, and you'll get the best performance that way. And even if you have to write a little bit more code, so what, it's the right thing to do. Thanks for the tip, Stephen. And for you watching out there in YouTube land, click those thumb icons and let us know what you think of Stephen's tip. Or check my Practically Perfect PL SQL series on YouTube as well. There you go.